Hey, it's Thursday night, and we're back for another episode of Aftermarket. I'm James Black, and I'm joined by... Aaron Miller. And guess what? We actually got guests this week, so we'll tell you exactly who we had to spend some time with right after the beat. Do you know my name? Okay, well, here we are again. They let us go for another week, Barrington. So we continue to uh, we continue to survive and thrive, I might add, because uh, we actually had some reader feedback this week, believe it or not. Yes, on uh, non-relatives. Yes, non- <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I just want to give, we're going to make this as interactive as we can because it's a, it's a, it's a slightly pre-recorded program. It's, it's not live. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to Taylor T. I'm not using the last name. So Taylor T, uh, Lionel G, and Matthew P. <laughs> I don't want to use last names, even though they gave them uh, in a public forum. It sounds it sound like they're a witness protection program. Yes. And if you know me on LinkedIn, I'll probably just link them anyways. But point being is we know you gave us comments. We want to give you credit for watching. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Because we actually got some ideas uh, from the, from the uh, we'll come up with a clever name for those who watch after market, like after after marketers. We go work on that one. After marketers, no, nah, <laughs> I no <laughs> no no. Okay, we'll figure it out. If you have ideas, just hit us in the comments below. And forget, uh, don't forget that uh, you can subscribe to CSE TV on which this is being broadcast, and you can hit the like button because that helps us get more views and helps uh, YouTube sort us out. So if you do like this program, give us a thumbs up. We got like over 10 thumbs up last show. So we're, we're doing well, uh, but we want more next time. And uh, I just want to say about fans, my mom, she did watch. Thank you, mom. Uh, though she had a very cute comment. She sent me a text and I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, Ask me to invite Will, who is my brother and is a musician <laughs> and is, you know, we're not that we're not there yet. I would love to have him on, but we've got other people. And uh, that being said, Barrington, we, we have the luxury and pleasure and joy to be joined later on this episode by Brendan and Sean from TV.live, which I, I'm uh, going to guess is going to be an awesome conversation. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah. As you may or may not know, I have a little background in training. Yes, you do. So, uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be a fun conversation. Be a great conversation. So that'll be at the end of this uh, this segment. So we're going to do some headlines because we, we again, we listen to the people. We got some great feedback. We listen to the people. That's right. <laughs> you know what? I actually got a... I got in my inbox uh, some suggestions mm. for headlines. So that we was love cool. suggestions. We love suggestions because you know that we can't just swipe right and get our headlines on our own. We need help. So, we need help. <laughs> so let's let's start off with some headlines. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna have the music sorted out. The producer is still looking for uh, for something catchy. But headlines oh, coming uh, right up. <laughs> okay, so. I got a Sorry. question. I got yeah, a question. Yeah, okay. More, yeah, not, it's not even a question. It's, uh, believe it or not, there might be people who didn't listen to the first two episodes. Uh, what is a lazy headline? Ah, uh, good point. Because I think this, we get to prove lazy headlines out on this episode. So uh, a lazy headline is you're at a, around a campfire, not a dinner party, because we already established that those don't exist anymore. And you just caught a headline here or there throughout your week. And you're trying to keep up conversation. And you want to sound smart. And uh, so what you do is you, you take that headline. And then um, what we're helping you with with that headline is just giving you a little more context. Because we didn't read the articles either. Don't, don't get me wrong. We're just trying to help you go through the thought process of how you can sound smart. So that when you have that headline, you can talk to someone and kind of jam for a few minutes before you can go and you know, uh, find an excuse to get out of the conversation. So uh, lazy headlines are a useful tool. They're going to help you through many social situations, uh, particularly for camping, not at a dinner party. And uh, we're here for you. This is to help. But it's also a business program. This is a business um, culture program. So we want to kind of, you know, give you a little insight and say, you know, I watched Aftermarket and I heard from those guys about X and here's my opinion and then I got to go to the washroom. So that, that's sort of what a lazy headline is useful for. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. That's how I get most of my information. Third party <laughs> <laughs> without very primary research, a uh, little primary research. Okay. So uh, we have a lazy headline today. Apple becomes U.S. first two trillion dollar company. Well, that's that's to me not necessarily a great headline. Other than Apple just got bigger, and I can't think of myself having bought anything from Apple in the last few weeks. But 
I assume um, they're doing something right. What do you think they're doing right, Barrington? What is Apple uh, doing? They have created an entire ecosystem. I don't even want to call it like a separate ecosystem. It is a system of yes. existence, of dependence, of great products. And I say, I'm assuming they're great. I am not an Apple user. I'm not an Apple wearer, uh, but my kids are. So there, it's in my house. There's more Apple stuff than non-Apple stuff as far as technology. And think about it. For somebody who buys it, who acquires it, who gets it, and doesn't use it, I have a ton of Apple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do. So uh, that's that's what they're doing. They, they, they're they filling a need. They're filling a need for people who didn't know they had a need. Yeah, they've done a lot of really great things, and it came down to design and, and quality. I mean, I've got older Apple computers that still work from seven, eight years ago, arguably better than my, um, you know, let's not name the company, but, you know, other yeah. big giant. Yeah, exactly. So point being, they've started with quality and I think they, they've gotten into the lifestyle thing. They've tried to get into the content thing um, with uh, TV and plus and all that, but Apple TV plus. Um, but I don't know about you, but I have not watched a single show on that, that platform, even though they gave it to you basically for free for a year. Uh, so. When the whole work from home started, Apple put out a fantastic commercial. Uh, right. that described the work from home and you know what just just look for it work from home apple uh, i think there's four main people uh, and how they work together all using apple and it, very clever and right now that's what apple does they give you things that you can relate to the majority of people can relate to that use their product and then they charge their, premium price for it. yeah they know their they know their audience very very well so kudos to them I'm still not going to switch because eh, Samsung guy over here. Yeah, 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 and I think Tim Cook is one of the is is moving up the uh, Forbes list and uh, very interesting because he's not a founder. He's he came on. I don't know when he came on. He's been there a long time, but yeah, um, yeah, good good for them. Okay, well that's the positive side of Apple, but the dark side is that they're going through some antitrust stuff right now, uh, not just on Capitol Hill, but uh, just recently the uh, the game Fortnite. So I'm going to read the headline. Is actually not exactly what i'm about to talk about but it was given to us so i want to respect that yes. you know fortnite app removal threatens social lifeline for young gamers okay so <laughs> what's <laughs> it threatens social lifeline come on so there's bread there's water there's shelter and then there's fortnite okay and um pretty so... much in that order I didn't realize the app store was my gateway to, uh, you know, you know, that the next level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, but that being said, the bigger issue here is that Fortnite, well, maybe it's not the bigger issue, but Fortnite was on the app store and they basically pulled shoot or someone kicked someone off the store. And this is where I'm getting lazy. And uh, essentially what Apple was doing was taking 30% cut of all the revenues that Epic was getting, the people that published Fortnite. Um, for in-game uh, transactions. And Fortnite is free. It's free, but everything that's free is not really free, right? It's not you know really that. free. No, no. You're going to get in. Your kid's going to get in. They want to get skins for their characters, buy guns, uh, access special events. Uh, Apple's going to get cut out of that. And there's this whole argument, I guess, around, you know, who needs who? So all to say, <laughs> <laughs> this has somehow extended itself to um, the threatening of people's trillion dollars. Not making an impact, is it? Who needs who? Two trillion dollars. Who needs who? Yeah, yeah. Well, I or think Fortnite. Uh, I'm going to make a, a, a guesstimation: is that they're in the, the many billions of dollars of what they make on that game annually. So um, they kind of maybe don't need each other. Maybe that's the lesson. You know, they're good for a little while, but uh, yeah, scary, scary in the sense again, threatened social lifeline for young gamers. Oh yeah, yeah, that that part. Let's yeah, let, let, let's address that part. Um, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, during COVID, I, I get it for sure. Because mm -hmm. up until March, I'm telling our kids, you know, stop looking down, stop looking down at your device, communicate, eye contact, say hello, shake hands. Ugh, not anymore. Wave elbows, fist bump, toe tap. Uh, but yeah, just basically communicate. And now I look like the ass because 
It's like, I can't. It's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of uh, solo adventuring going on right now. And by that, I mean, uh, there's games like I've mentioned on this program, Animal Crossing, which my five-year-old may or may not be playing right now so I can tape this. Um, <laughs> actually, he's supposed to be in bed, but I digress. <laughs> But uh, most recently, this is the one that made headlines this week. So another lazy headline. Microsoft is resurrecting its 38-year-old flight simulator game. That's pretty exciting in its own right. <laughs> so, Sorry, okay, show of hands, uh, people that played it when it when it first came out. I wanted to, but my computer wasn't fast enough back in the 90s. Show of hands who thought they could really fly a plane if they had to in a pinch. Not interested. I, no, I thought I could. Uh, yeah. It was that good. I'm yes. Sorry, yeah, I'm it's aware just... of it. I just couldn't play because I didn't have a Pentium chip in my computer. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad it's back. I'm glad so, it's back. and I'm doubling up on the story, Barrington, because we'll, we'll tie it all together in a second. We're going to be making like uh, um, connections here, like we're CSI. But AMC <laughs> is reopening its theaters next week with 15 cent tickets. So I'd like to play a new game. Uh, this is unfortunately COVID. Maybe it's fortunately COVID related, but we're going to leverage the situation. We're going to use a business term here, leverage. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little quiz game called, what will you do first? What will you do first? Will you, will you go into a movie theater? Or will uh, B, you? B. Hold on, B. hold on. B. Will you go into a movie theater first? Or will you fly or get on a plane first? Get on a plane that someone else is flying. Let's be very specific here. Hey, <laughs> I am going to a movie theater first mm -hmm. uh, because one, assuming that I didn't pre-select my seats, which I probably would if there's a bunch of X's around me, but even still. Absolutely necessary. <laughs> absolutely necessary. Okay. If that's not the case, I can at least go in survey it find a place away from uh, in my comfort zone if that comfort zone gets intruded i will simply get up and leave uh, yeah on a plane no chance no chance right. i've been on planes pre-covid well I, everything was pre-covid <laughs> i've been on planes pre-covid and i wanted to get off because of various circumstances people aromas whatever <laughs> and i and i can't and that's just me being uptight and well you know, i mean the aroma spoiled. sometimes is the airplane food itself which is you know yeah no this was uh you know I'm, I'm just thinking of the the most depressing flight which is usually back from vegas that is yeah one it, you know yeah, lots lots of aromas happening on that flight, I'm sure. Yeah. So so yes, I'm gonna choose I'm choosing A. I'm choosing A all day long. Uh for fifteen cents. <laughs> Here's a quarter. Sure. What's your life worth, Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> uh just to just to check it out. I'm gonna take a look around. And again, I can always get up and I'm out fifteen cents. You're out fifteen cents. But remember last week we talked about popcorn math. So that popcorn's gonna be like sixty bucks. Oh, I'm not having, I'm not popcorn. You seem like the kind of guy who sneaks in his own snacks. I'm just saying. I have bags <laughs> that I will reuse and refold. How did Absolutely. how do we go from we talked about the nineties for a second there? Back then they had ushers, they had flashlights, they would frisk you. I mean, like all your rights were out the window frisk, when you went to a movie theater. Frisk you? What kind of theaters were you going to? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying they would make a concerted effort to make sure you weren't sneaking food in. And now it's like, yeah, whatever. You can bring a picnic basket and they're not going to stop you. You know what? You have your personal rights and freedoms. You do not have the right to search my person. They don't pay them enough. They don't pay them enough. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think the rate, the going rate for an usher has come down dramatically. The skill set needed for that position in the uh, yeah, 21st just, centuries. Just go ahead. Just go, go ahead. ahead. Just, just go buy ahead. a bag. It's, not, it's not worth it. It's so not worth it. No, because I'm I'm a sucker and I'm buying my sixty dollar popcorn and pop, and I'm basically carrying freight for that whole business. So, um, me personally, I'm not going on either anytime soon because I am happy here talking to you in my basement. And until that changes, <laughs> yeah. But if you have to pick one, you have to pick one. You have. To uh, I'll go to the movie theater because I can see the exit door and go through it. I'm 100. percent Plus, I'm strangely something about watching a movie on an airplane where I feel like the experience is now dramatically diminished. I mean, obviously the screen's small and all that, but 
Um, I just feel like I missed the wave. So like, if I'm going to go to a movie like Mulan or Tenet or whatever, um, oh, oh wait, Mulan is Mulan's not coming out in the movie theaters. Go to last week's episode to find out why. Um, yeah, so that's, um, well, uh, okay. So let's transition here. I'll tell you what I'm doing before or after, or basically any day, doesn't matter what the heck I'm doing. I'm going to Tim Hortons because like most um, Canadians, I'm not going to say it's point of pride. It's just something we do because there's a gazillion of them around. I'm going to go to Tim Hortons. I'm going to get a coffee cup. But again, lazy headline. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, I'm forewarning, this this goes into some of the social uh, stuff that we mentioned we would talk about on the show. So I might That's get right. a little more serious here for a sec. Uh, Tim Hortons delays hockey Barbie rollout to rush production of Black Doll. Let that one hang for a sec. Just let um, it hang. Just let it hang. So, let it hang. My, my, first, my first thing, uh, good on you, Tim Hortons, mm-hmm. in the first place for making a doll of blackness. Thank you for being aware of the issue and publicizing it several weeks, if not months, after this was like a serious issue. Well, it still is. It still is a serious issue. Yes, it is. Yeah. Ongoing. Ongoing. Yeah. But good on Tim Hortons. Um, Because between doing nothing and doing something, they are doing something. Could they have done it earlier? Doesn't matter. They're doing something. And so good on Tim Hortons. So I'm going to open a new segment, micro segment called unsolicited advice. So um, again, you'd be at a party and someone will give you advice that you never asked for. Uh, I would actually most of the time tell you not to be that person unless you got something really interesting to say. Uh, but my unsolicited advice for Tim Hortons was, okay, the PR people at Tim Hortons clearly leaked this story. I, I mean, it says right in the article that I, I, I read like be- just below. <laughs> uh, Which and, is what uh, we do. We're consistent. <laughs> so either they're worried about getting caught having no black dolls or B, they're doing what I really dislike, which is, uh, you know, some sort of virtue signaling that they were going to go back. But yeah, well, in my neighborhood, I don't think anyone was waiting for this. So I'm kind of curious why they had to let the cat out of the bag, uh, other than I think it's good PR for them, or they thought it was. But at the end of the day, as you said, Barrington, do the right thing, uh, just like Spike Lee, and just make the doll, get it out when it's ready, and let people, you know... Um, get it when they want it uh but here's my bigger thing maybe not bigger but let's talk about tim horton's cards don't mess with the cards these need to come out this year i I love these cards um but we have a serious problem and in this book of cards barrington uh we got to address the issue of diversity can you just can you just lay on me how many people of color you think are in this book oh uh what's the year we're talking last year 28 2018, 2019, 2020? Yes, sir. Uh, I am going to guess 10. Wow. You're off by nine. There's one. There's 19? <laughs> no, no, no. There's one no, PK Subban card in the base no, set. That's... He's in there twice if you count the replica die cast card. So, yeah. Uh, uh, that's... I. Come on, you know what? Tim Hortons giveth, Tim Hortons taketh. <laughs> Jeez. Let's get the doll sorted out. Let's work with get the, the NHL. You know what? Let's issue. start. Let's start. <laughs> you need you need the ground floor. Fine. Let's start. Um, yeah. yeah. Celebrate hockey. Celebrate diversity. And then we can get on to not just having PK. I mean, I love his personality, and it's big enough for the nine others. In a good, positive way. He's great. Um, but we need we need more. There's so much more. Pretty sure we're getting a Matt Dumbledore this year. I'm just going to say that. All right. I am done with headlines this week. Thank you, everyone, for your submissions. You're always welcome to email me, Barrington, uh, or Barrington, to uh, give us some ideas. Uh, we've got a guest. So you set this up, Barrington. Set it up for us. Set it up for our viewers. Uh, who do we talk to? And what are we... What, what are, if people join us for the next 20 minutes of the show, what are they going to get? Well, we are a stock exchange. We're a fully recognized stock exchange, access to public markets. Now, what do you do with those, uh, with that access? Mm-hmm. You can trade stocks. 
And it's, we're not just talking Wolf of Wall Street or Wall Street, Gordon Gecko or Boiler Room or any of that. It is, it is an industry that has skyrocketed mm-hmm. in the last six months. People are home. People are trading. People are day trading, retail trading. What does it all mean? You hear terms like algos. You hear terms like uh, Forex and foreign exchange and positions and swaps and everything. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does so. it mean? So again, when you're at that dinner party or, or campfire, that's this is more ammunition for you to to sound smart. And actually, I think. Uh, after this interview, you'll actually be smarter. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, transition to that interview. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next clip. This is James, and I'm joined by... Barrington Miller. You got it. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs)